Hello and welcome to another YouTube presentation by the London Transport Museum Friends. The last two years have seen many changes in all our personal lives as we've sought to deal with the COVID pandemic. So too for the London Transport Museum. It saw its doors closed temporarily and had to adapt to maintain contact with its audiences and to keep revenue streams flowing. Museum Director Sam Mullins is going to look back on the challenges and the achievements of the past year uh, and to highlight the opportunities that 2022 now brings. Sam recorded this talk before he became aware uh, of a recent very important piece of news. I'm pleased to say that London Transport Museum has won the prestigious award of London Visitor Attraction of the Year. So many congratulations to Sam and to his team for that achievement. Sam won't reference that award in the pre-recorded talk, but if all goes to plan, Sam will be present at the talk's premiere. So if you are watching then, you can put your comments and questions to him using the chat function. My understanding is Sam will join us not from home, not from his office, but from outside a very familiar building. Sam, over to you. Well, standing on a busy Covent Garden piazza outside the museum uh, for, this, for this talk to the friends, it's hard to remember uh, how recently, just how quiet this, this area has been for so much of the last two years. And it's great that it's kind of busy and we've got a really uh, full museum during half term uh, behind us. Your support as friends, moral support, financial support in the last year has been really important to my colleagues and I, to, uh, uh, to the organisation. So it's a pleasure to be thinking uh, about a much more positive future in 2022 as we just kind of reflect back on, on where we've been uh, during the Covid years. Well, good evening. Uh, I'm in the Cubic Theatre at London Transport Museum and unfortunately you as an audience are not. But this will be hopefully the last of these uh, remote events uh, for, for some time because the Cubic will be back in action uh, in April. So what I'm booked to do for you this evening is give you a kind of flavour of where the museum's been in the last, over the last year during, during Covid and give you a a sense of where, we, where we're going to be going in 2022. Charles Dickens in The Tale of Two Cities talked about the, re the French Revolution as being the, the best of times and the worst of times. It was a season of light, it was a season of darkness, it was the spring of hope and the winter of despair and it could easily refer to Covid, couldn't it really? It's been the most extraordinary couple of years and a year which we've kind of run out of, of, of adjectives to, to describe. During that time, the support of you as the friends has been invaluable, moral support, uh, financial support, which I'm particularly appreciative of. So I'm going to reflect back a little over uh, the, the past year. And it, it already it's kind of becoming history as I was preparing this, uh, preparing this talk, which seems quite strange. It's, it's good that we're coming out of, out of COVID, out of the pandemic, we think. Maybe some bumps on the road to come, but it feels that we're back into being able to plan for more than a week or two ahead, which is a, a, a good place to be. So uh, looking back, um, when COVID hit in March 2020, uh, we were closed down on March 17th. Uh, for a while, we were down to just 28 staff with, with furloughing. Um, we had a huge, over the year, 7 million hole in our, in our finances. Um, we were only open for 10 weeks in 2020, 2021, uh, and we've just been open this year again since, um, since May the 17th, uh, 2021. And so the whole organisation had to consider its very existence, was thrown into a huge, huge existential crisis, and we lost £7 million of income uh, uh, over that time. So we had to pivot pretty quickly. To, to, to new priorities and, and into rescue mode. And one of the ways we did that was to pivot into much more digital delivery of, of, of what we do. And we moved very quickly with programmes like uh, Hidden London, virtual tours, uh, hangouts, you as friends uh, had your own, your own digital programme, uh, which uh, was, was a really important thing. It taught us a really big lesson um, early on in, in, in COVID uh, that it was p 
perfectly okay to, to do something rather than nothing. And present perfection is uh, the enemy of good. Uh, and getting those simple digital strands out onto YouTube, um, enhancing our digital content on the website uh, was, was a really Im important uh, part of that. And we sort of early on had to kind of decide what we were going to, what our priorities were going to be uh, for the future, other than making sure we could stay in, uh, stay in existence. And of course, for the first six months through to about October 2020, that was you know, by no means a given. And it's already kind of quite hard to think back to how that, how that felt uh, at the time. Uh, what we knew we had to do was kind of double back on the things that we, that we do uh, as a charity. So inspiring young Londoners, our work on the STARS project out across London and the learning team, they in turn moved completely uh, to digital to maintain that social impact. And those brilliant programs that we've done for years in person in schools, uh, had to go out in a, in, a, in a digital form. We very early on kind of decided that um, that, that phrase building back better um, was, was, was important to us. Uh, and so we've, we determined that when we, when we were able to get back into activity again, we would open with a really kind of strong sense of environmental responsibility and we'd uh, re increase our, our kind of literacy of green issues and that we'd look at virtually all the programs we do through that lens of what what serves the cause of a sustainable city uh, into, into the future. And um, a kind of really core part of, uh, of our resilience during lockdown and, and in, in the recovery phase was, was, the, was the people who, who, who are with us, uh, who work for us, who are associated uh, with us. Um, the, the culture of the museum has always been kind of really resilient and agile and adaptive. And my goodness, that was, that was needed, you know, at m more so than almost any other time uh, in the organization's history. And whether it's, whether it's my, my colleagues, the volunteers, friends, our corporate members, um, our supporters at, at TFL, um, we relied on that, that moral support um, and the agility of the people around us to, 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 to keep going um, during, a, during a difficult time, when in effect, in effect the museum was being run from 28 bedrooms um, across, across London. But finally we were able to open again in, in sort of August, uh, September 2020. You'll remember that we opened at Acton first with a kind of innovative, distanced uh, family programme uh, that, that worked very well and we actually learnt quite a lot from that. Uh, you'll be very familiar with um, you know, big kind of mass op open weekends uh, at Acton. Um, this was an opportunity to get the place to yourself almost in a much more kind of sequenced visit. And that's given us, I think, some interesting, interesting lessons uh, for, for, for the future. And finally, uh, the big day arrived when we could uh, actually reopen at Covent Garden again. And you'll see uh, Andy Byford, the new the then new TfL commissioner with, with Elizabeth outside the front door of the museum. We welcomed visitors back uh, for, for, for the first time and we weren't quite sure who was more excited, uh, the visitors uh, or, or us, but it really felt good to be finally back after all that time uh, doing what we, you know, what we know we're best at. So that was the, um, that was the kind of COVID, COVID period. We learned a huge amount about ourselves, uh, about our audiences um, and about um, their loyalty uh, to us uh, during that time and as we reopened um, that was a that was really important part of uh, uh, of supporting uh, the museum back into activity. Now as as the friends of the museum you'll be particularly interested in what, we, what we've actually added to the collection during those past two years. One or two of these things I was quite surprised uh, to find we had collected uh, while, while, we were, while we were closed. So the City and South London locomotive um, uh, was uh, on loan from, from the Science Museum. Uh, it was in use on the world's first deep tube uh, electric railway from 1890 to 1924. Of course, when the City and South London was closed to be rebuilt, enlarged into the city branch of, of, of the Northern Line. Um, and it was, it's been on loan uh, to us for 
uh, for many years and it's finally been transferred lock stock and barrel uh, into the ownership of uh, of the London Transport Museum and here in the in the in the photograph you can see that the slide of uh, CSLR number 13 um, and one of its one of the other members of its class been broken up at Stockwell Depot uh, in in 1925. We also collected um, in the kind of design uh, area in particular. This is a, a kind of favourite of mine. This is um, a fantastic uh, a piece of textile art produced by an artist called Michael O'Connell, who's little known, but is kind of regarded as the kind of lost modernist. Um, he worked sometimes in Australia, sometimes in London, but was in London perhaps for the apogee of his career in the 50s and 60s. He, he did a number of hangings for uh, uh, the 19 uh, for 1951 on the on the south bank uh, and this one is one called underground covent garden which is uh, uh, about a meter and a quarter by a meter and three quarters it's a huge large uh, p piece of work and it kind of fits uh, fits in the gap in our collections in the poster collection in particular london transport got a bit conservative um, in the 60s and 70s. There wasn't much about pop art and about you know, modern art in, in poster commissions at that date. And this one uses the, the names of stations and um, the kind of colours of the lines and the lettering, and it, and it includes Covent Garden on it as well. So we, we acquired that. And we think we might try and use that in one of our, one of our meeting spaces. It's too good to hide away in the store. Uh, but we, so we'd like to have that out on a, on a, on a regular basis. Um, we also uh, collected some really nice uh, personal material. This is um, some items relating to a clippy in the Second World War, uh, Rosina Reed, um, photograph of her and a with a colleague on the left and with her, her, her license badge and her um, permit to con conduct a bus, to conduct a public service vehicle dating from, uh, dating from 1941. And you know, as, as you know, we like to bring a personal element to the stories we tell. And this is a really nice example of uh, women recruited for the second time into the workforce um, in London uh, during the Second World War. And then similarly, we also did an interesting contemporary collecting project with uh, Metroline, where we got the children of Metroline drivers um, to reflect on their kind of pride in what their uh, family member did uh, during uh, the pandemic. And we've got some of the drawings they made of um, their dad's buses, uh, a very kind of personal and impactful set of items, very um, symbolic of a distinct moment in time and one, one, uh, one guy wrote on the side of his drawing, my dad is a hero because he helps other heroes to get to work. We uh, collected also a number of really interesting um, signs uh, of, of, to add to that sign mezzanine at Acton and, and to, to exhibitions. Um, on the left here, um, a southbound trains sign, probably from Warwick Avenue or Queen's Park dating from the opening of the line north to, from Paddington to Queen's Park in, in 1915. A, a danger sign used to fix to those Art Nouveau lift grills when lift maintenance was being done. That's kind of pre-London Passenger Transport Board and a rather fabulous uh, handmade sign for the Signal Engineers Department annual dinner and social uh, from, from, from 1950. And then a, 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 a huge piece of early uh, underground signage dating from around 1913, um, I think, which uh, the Friends uh, helped us buy at auction for uh, addition, addition to the collection. And then part of that kind of contemporary collecting mission uh, during, during uh, lockdown, we, we, we were keen to run a big contemporary collecting project that looked at how staff responded uh, to working under COVID conditions. And here we've actually got um, a f uh, the whiteboard, which their Royal Highness is the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge, in 2020 wrote on uh, thanking transport workers for their contribution uh, through, the, through the pandemic, uh, which is uh, really nice to have. So we've got those kind of small scale individual interventions from school children um, and we've got royalty and, and everything uh, in between. Now, in many respects, um, 
Christmas last year, Christmas 2021, was a kind of watershed, uh, watershed moment. Uh, yes, we were locked down, you know, for the for the third time by by the Omicron uh, variant, but we had an extraordinary uh, successful Christmas. Our audiences really came back to us um, in in great numbers, like a kind of bow, pent up bow wave of of demand. I remember standing at the front door. And uh, a mum arrived with a buggy and two children and, you know, coats and baggage and so forth early on. And, uh, you know, through my mask, I said, welcome to uh, welcome to London Transport Museum. And she said, you know, we've, I've taken these two to every piece of green space in West London. I'm just so glad to go somewhere different. Um, so we, we've, we, we've seen that. And Christmas... Christmas last year was uh, a big success for us um, in retail terms. It was 2% better than last year. And we put on a great programme with the Winter Wonderland, with an advert sung for us by the Papini sisters. Um, Jeanette and Mike worked their wonders uh, in the, uh, in the, with the Christmas programme. And we had some really interesting um, fair trade items, as well as, of course, the legendary arrival of the pyjamas, the Rootmaster pyjamas in the shop. They were only in the shop for 14 days, and I think we sold 432 pairs. So Christmas went down well uh, here and uh, with our shoppers and visitors. So... Um, to to, to summarise, uh, 2021 um, was a year of kind of steady, steady recovery uh, and and improvement. Um, what kept us going more than anything else, I think, was uh, some serious funding from the Culture Recovery Fund and from TfL, uh, something like four million in emergency funding. Um, and when we reopened, um, we've done an average of 64% across the year since since May the 17th last year in terms of visitor numbers, which is, which is great, which with the loss of international visitors this year uh, is, is, is quite an achievement, I think. And we're, we're well ahead of most other uh, L- London museums in terms of our kind of performance against 2019, which is, which is great to see. Huge tribute to our customer service staff and the welcome they give us uh, and to kind of marketing and and. and Com staff at the, at the museum. Secrets of the London Underground um, broadcast for the first time back in the summer of, of last year um, was the most successful commission that the um, UK TV uh, have ever had, uh, which which was great, um, and that supported our Hidden London virtual tour business, uh, supported sales of the book, and once we were able to open again. Uh, in-person tours, which was which was which was great to have, and the second series is is just completed filming now. Much to our pleasant surprise, uh, corporate income stayed at something like eighty percent, um, and corporate membership at nearly a hundred percent during the lockdown. Uh, and the Guildhall dinner that we held in November last year made a record of four hundred and thirty-four pounds profit, um, best best we've ever done by about about. 50,000 and there was a great atmosphere uh, at the event it was the the first kind of big industry event for for transport in London and the whole supply chain uh, to get together and we had Rory Bremner as the as as the host held the held the evening uh, together really well and we had lots of plaudits for Claire and the team uh, who, who delivered that. The Hangouts team for Hidden London uh, produced over 70 episodes uh, last year uh, and kind of kept the flag flying for us in particular when uh, we w- when we were closed um, and that will be really kind of helpful investment for the future and it was part of that whole process of uh, understanding that if we went to digital we reach all sorts of uh, markets and visitors potential visitors we might not have uh, other- otherwise done so you know someone hanging on a, uh, a hangout from Romania or, or a virtual tour from you know, Australia. You know, we always known there was a kind of international audience potential for, for what we do, but seeing it sort of slightly by accident when we were locked down has been really interesting. So there were, there were lots of lessons uh, to, to, to learn from, from the past year um, around what great people uh, that we have and how important that, that can-do culture is at the museum. The, about the museum's purpose being kind of even clearer uh, and, and better, uh, more needed than, than ever before uh, at a time of, of crisis for the capital, about kind of good, solid, 
uh, absolutely authentic content uh, being being re really well received and about just doing things and trying things trying things quickly all the time uh, having to having to work from home so at last we're in 2022 we're able to plan ahead a little bit further what does the what does that future hold for us um, well the museum's in a really good state the new legacies exhibition uh, we're really pleased with it's been produced in a really interesting way with an advisory board um, I feel it's kind of deals with a, a really important subject in London's history in a really balanced uh, lively uh, colorful way the London Transport at War exhibition was put up during lockdown you might not have caught up with that yet and we've refreshed the Hidden London uh, exhibition as well and this is a busy half term all around us uh, here um, we've got a lot of visitors coming back to Covent Garden and to the museum which is really which is really great to see the museum director loves a queue at the front door as long as it doesn't last uh, too, too long that is uh, what else we got to look forward to? Well, um, Secrets of London Underground will broadcast second series uh, in the middle of the year. Uh, that is, is really good for us. Uh, there's, there's a lot for our profile. Will help us sell the in-person tours, which we're back in uh, in action. Um, selling again, um, big tranche of tours coming out uh, in early April. Um, we've got the opening of the Elizabeth Line, the first new underground line uh, in London since well, since the Victoria Line, uh, huge, spacious, shiny, will change the perception of uh, the public transport experience uh, in, in London. And we're going to feature that in the museum. I'm going to be offering in-person tours of the station and uh, some virtual tours up, uh, up, up to the opening date uh, in, the, in the middle of the, of the year. So with, uh, with the friend's help and a fair wind, uh, we will uh, have a really uh, exciting 2022 and we'll rebuild many aspects uh, of our business and that's what we're going to talk about for the rest of the presentation. So 2022, um, the, the view from the bridge. Um, uh, Covid we think in the rear view mirror but we're still taking quite a cautious, quite a safe approach to look after our colleagues and, and, and our visitors. Uh, there's still a lot of uncertainty uh, in the UK around wages, around the supply chain, about uh, people feeling short of money and about, about inflation. Uh, and that's going to have to be factored into uh, every, everything we do. In the past year, we've had a you know, huge shot in the arms from Culture Recovery Fund and, and, uh, and from TfL. And that's meant that we kind of recover from a higher base. You know, we recover from a 2019 base rather than going back to a much smaller organisation that, that we had to be uh, during lockdown, you know, with 20, 30, 40, 50 people, which has been fantastic. And it's meant that we've had capacity to, uh, to really work at, 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 rec at recovery. We've had a good year on income generation. All our trading lines have done better than budget. Now, it has to be said that our budget was pretty pessimistic when, when put together last February, when we were you know, still, in the, uh, still in, the, in the midst of the pandemic. But it, I think it's been really helpful talking to emergency and external funders to be able to say, well, we've, you know, we've, we've done what we can with our hand uh, in terms of virtual tours and um, uh, go, going digital and the online shop and so forth. We just need some help, kind of uh, emergency funding uh, to, to cover that gap. We've got Secrets of London Underground second series coming out sometime in the middle of the year, I don't know, May or June, uh, perhaps. And that will be again, a great um, app, uh, Philip to our the Hidden London uh, business, which we're hoping to run this year at something like the capacity of 2019-20, so maybe 40,000 tickets, tours at seven or eight different 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 stations. That's that's getting back up and running. And the tickets we've sold, um, offered up to date, we uh, we've sold everything, 99% uh, of capacity, which is which is which is great to have. So we're continuing to to talk to the Arts Council about funding uh, for for the for the coming year to TfL for as for a kind of safety net. And we know we'll need corporate and your support uh, as friends as well continues uh, to be really, really important uh, to us, both, both financially in terms of moral support and um, the, the, uh, the volunteering that you, that, you, that you do for us. 
London is kind of recovering at the moment. Um, this week, which is the half term week, its tube is running at something like 60% of normal in 2019 and buses at about 75%. It's kind of edging upwards. The return to the office in London is happening, um, but, but, but fairly slowly. Um, and TfL is, uh, as ever, still waiting for a sustainable long-term uh, funding, funding settlement uh, from, from government uh, to really aid its, uh, and support its recovery. So 2022, uh, we're, we're characterising as, as the rebuild year. Last year was about recovery. Um, as I've shown, it, we've made a pretty good recovery, I think. Um, we rebuild in 2022-23 and we think uh, really hard about our long-term future. We think really hard about what a five-year plan from 2023 onwards uh, might look like. We try out some ideas, um, but more importantly, we, we invest in, uh, uh, in, that, in that whole rebuild and, and recovery. There will be a number of kind of consistent strands, I think, which you'll you'll see uh, in, in that rebuilding process. Um, I've, I've talked already about that kind of green journey, um, being a, a net positive mindset being really important to us. It seems to me that uh, as, you, as we come out, of, come out of COVID, notwithstanding um, war in Europe, um, the, the whole issue about the future sustainability of this city and, and the planet is, is the big issue which we have to address. And we're determined to do our own piece in terms of uh, our own footprint, our own carbon footprint here at the museum, as well as, as uh, be a forum for discussion about, uh, about sort of society's futures. The staff culture issue, which I, I've talked about, which has been so strong, really needs to continue to be supported. And we're kind of bringing more and more our volunteers, our board members, some of our corporate members um, and advisors kind of into regarding them all as, 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 as part of that culture. We've been able to do it during lockdown because of LTM life and different kind of styles of communication. And we're pretty uh, determined uh, to, to keep that up. And that notion that this is an ethical organisation, that uh, the bottom line is only there to give us resources to do good work, uh, will, will remain really important. So that notion of a kind of triple, triple bottom, bottom line uh, will remain with us. And we'll look at issues like um, maintaining free, free admission for children, uh, the sponsors we deal with, the, the places we source, uh, merchandise for the for the shop, all all very much part of that, or, uh, part of that story. So building back um, is, uh, is will be based, we think, on pretty strong visitor demand this year. I don't think we're going to see a lot of foreign tourists, but um, who knows? We're all dead keen to get out and, and fly to the sun, so perhaps a number of them will be interested to come to uh, to, to come to London. Uh, we're going to have um, three. Uh, act and open weekends of the, you know, the traditional type uh, this year. First one on 24th, 21st to the 24th of April. Uh, inflation is very much kind of with us in, 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 our, in our thinking at the moment. It hasn't been a factor for years, but that means I think that admission charges at the museum will have to rise uh, from, from April just to, just to keep pace with uh, RPI, which is running at five and a half percent, and will and will rise perhaps to uh, rise to seven. I've talked about Hidden London returning to 2019 levels. We're hoping to sell 30,000 plus tickets. Uh, venue hire has, of course, completely disappeared um, pretty well uh, during during the past two years. Uh, inquiries now booming um, for that. And we're hoping that business will come back uh, really really hard this year. That that appetite for getting together working with people in person, putting teams back together that have been talking to each other on Zoom and Teams for two years. Really, uh, I think, re really significant for our daytime and, and, and evening uh, corporate hire business. There are strong prospects in the corporate membership um, sector, particularly uh, uh, around the green agenda. Um, Secret Series 2 uh, in, in the middle of the year will 
give us a, 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 lot of, uh, a lot of good publicity. And the museum will feature a bit more, I think, in this series than uh, in, in series one. And uh, dear to your hearts, I'm sure, uh, we'll be back into heritage vehicle operations during the, particularly the back end of the year. Um, and um, I'll, I'll, I'll come on to that in just, just a moment. So we reopened um, this year with uh, the, a new exhibition, um, Legacies, uh, story of direct recruitment uh, in, in the Caribbean and the, the way that's uh, shaped London in, in, in all kinds of ways. This is a, a new style of exhibition for us. It's been put together in a, in a really fresh way, using a lot of participation from people for whom this is their lived experience or their families, families' lived experience. So Legacies, launched um, last month. A lot of good coverage uh, in, in the media secured, particularly for those advisors who definitely stole the show um, our, on, the, on, the news, on the news coverage. And we have a, a programme kind of wrapped around the, the uh, legacies story for, for late nights and, and so forth um, into, into the future. There's some, some projects on, on the move at the moment. Um, Albany House as a sort of new style workplace is pretty much complete. A bit of tech and data to be sorted out, but that, that's kind of there. And uh, when I was there this week, uh, every desk on the first floor was taken when I arrived um, in the middle of the morning, which was, which was good to see. And I saw a whole bunch of people I haven't seen for a long time and introduced myself to one or two I'd never met actually uh, physically before. Uh, as you know, work on the cubic foyer out here it will come to an end uh, in April and we'll be, we'll be back in action there again. It'll be a really nice meeting space in the centre of Covent Garden and a bit quieter and a bit more con controllable in terms of the atmosphere there uh, for, uh, for the future and that will work really well for corporate members and we hope you'll have some of your board meetings uh, here as well. We've secured uh, nearly 300,000 for chillers and lift repair, one of those you know, pretty difficult projects to get anyone to, uh, to to help us fund but that's come from a central government uh, museums fund and Jeff is on the move uh, sorting that project uh, out at the moment and then during the year we'll have a look at our offices here at Covent Garden um, and at Acton and bring them up to the kind of standard which uh, you get at um, Albany House. So vehicle operations for the for the year is uh, something that I, I know a lot of people uh, listening to this will be interested in um, we think we'll be back doing uh, some 38 stock runs on the Piccadilly line uh, this year, probably earliest June, July. Uh, this is all a bit provisional, I have to say, at the moment, because there's a huge amount of work to do in terms of compliance to, to get back there before we can confirm dates. But we get a lot of support from Andy Lord, uh, the MD for uh, the underground uh, within TfL, um, and we'll be shortly appointing a new... Um, heritage Operations Manager, a Rail Heritage Operations Manager, to help us uh, make that happen. We'd like to participate in the Amersham Heritage Weekend um, this, this year, and it is also Sarah Siddons' centenary uh, locomotive, um, and John Hamden, of course, upstairs in the exhibition, both built uh, in, in 1922. On the roadside, there's a lot to do to get road vehicles kind of back in action after a two-year hiatus. Um, we've booked DMS uh, number one for uh, an event uh, later this month on Route 101 uh, and for the Brighton commercial vehicle run uh, in May. Uh, we think one of our other runners this year will be, will be the RF uh, 537 and we have one or two other ideas in the pipeline which uh, I'm not able to to, to do more than guess for you at the moment. We are going to cart marking on uh, 16th of July uh, and we are going to, to Imber um, in the middle of Salisbury Plain for Imber bus on the, on, the, on the 20th of August. So there's a lot to look forward to uh, this, this year. Um, first act and open weekend in, in three years, the Legacies exhibition, uh, Hidden London in-person tours again, some lates in the museum and um, of course we have got the huge excitement of the Elizabeth line opening uh, in the first half of the year, um, maybe May, maybe June, um, but um, uh, that, that'll soon be, soon be announced I think and we're going to be uh, offering both in-person tours of the new stations when it's possible and virtual tours uh, in, in advance of opening and some of those have already been featured um, in the Chris Nicks uh, hangouts. 
Uh, we've got volunteers back across the board at the museum, which is good. They bring a kind of different quality to uh, to the engagement from our, uh, our, our regular staff with their kind of enthusiasm and deep wells of knowledge, and that's that's been really good to see in the last in the last couple of months. Uh, we've, we're rebooting our patrons program uh, back into action again. Now we have a. a a philanthropy manager to do it for us and big volunteer projects like Q Stock at Acton and the Victoria Line train operation project uh, are back and active using those deep wells of volunteer knowledge and of course it means that a number of friends funded uh, projects which have been in abeyance or been really hard to deliver uh, during lockdown will be uh, back in action um, shortly. So it's really been Great to have an opportunity just to outline kind of where we've been, where we're going uh, as, as a museum uh, to our friends group. I've been really pleased that membership has kept up remarkably well uh, during the time we've been locked down. Uh, the magazine remains uh, the best of, of its type. It's a, uh, it gets bigger uh, every, every issue, it would seem, and has more and more really great content in it. And my um, particular compliments to, to Barry uh, for, 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 for putting that uh, together. Friends are having a, lo a lot of thought at the moment about their relationship to the museum, their own governance, bringing new board members on, um, we're kind of refreshing the offer that's all really good and we're we're incredibly uh, supportive uh, of of that well there you are that's my reflection on the last couple of years and uh, a glance into the, the, the future of the museum which um, which you which you help support so from a busy museum at half term in Covent Garden it's back to Barry Lejeune in the studio Yes, back to a fictional studio that may look very much like my uh, home office. Thank you, Sam. I was very impressed, as I hope others were, by how your presentation moved around in both time and space, rather like a Doctor Who programme. Uh, it covered a lot of ground, both in its content and in your own physical moves from one location to the other. All our previous speakers have remained very firmly stationary. It's a very positive story of how a constructive relationship between a museum and its friends can succeed in times of great change and great challenge. We've shared alongside you the frustrations of plans and projects temporarily delayed or unfulfilled, but it's really exciting to see what now lies ahead. The Friends have a clear commitment to support a variety of museum projects in 2022. Indeed, we're even providing some of the money towards that unsexy but essential renewal of lifts and coolers. And we will be discussing with you and your colleagues how Friends support develops in the years ahead as the museum recovers, rebuilds and resets. At the time of recording, we are planning to offer our next presentation by the London Fire Brigade Museum Friends in April via recording on YouTube. But we do plan to be back live in Covent Garden and also on YouTube for our talk in May on transport in the Isle of Man. Please join us then. My thanks to everyone for watching. Thanks to Sam for all he's told us. And congratulations again to the museum on being London Visitor Attraction of the Year.